shut up, you listen to my monkey mouth. As a companion, when you got pun on the canoe route, hopped in a portal and got in a fight. Elias knocked him out. Bow, Naruto fighting style. Bow, you will see he tapped out. Bow, we win, we get crowned. Monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth, monkey mouth. Welcome back, Armchair Army. Hope you guys are all doing good. Hope y'all enjoyed the fights over the weekend. They were really, really awesome fights. Uh, I know I certainly enjoyed the shit out of myself. I was able to hang out at my house with my boy and uh, basically just dedicated the whole Saturday to enjoying the fights. Went and got me some noodles from my favorite Thai spot. Um, it all came together. It all came together just fine. Uh, I'm not going to go over the... Uh, fight cards that uh, led up to this one because we did a preview on this card and went over those pretty effectively so if you've been keeping up you've already heard what I have to say about the cards leading up to this one so uh, just diving right on into 280 it was a great night of fights I mean even the even the prelims were a lot of fun uh, Bilal Muhammad was definitely the uh, the highlight of the prelims for me uh, I believe he even got a performance bonus which I believe he thoroughly deserved uh, he took out Sean Brady, who uh, is a violent young up-and-comer. Uh, I thought it was going to be a really great test for Bilal. And uh, Bilal hurt him it, it, late in the second round and just swarmed him. Uh, really, really impressive work is all you can say. His striking looked great. Um, once he had him hurt, you know, the, he was fighting a guy who's also a, a very effective wrestler. So it seemed like they kind of stalemated each other's wrestling and it turned into a striking fight by the you know midway through the second round and uh once that happened it was clearly Bilal's fight and so uh you know this is exactly what Bilal Muhammad needed um was an impressive win over an up-and-coming guy it's going to be really hard to to not give this guy what he wants at welterweight moving forward I mean looking at these rankings and welterweight right now I mean, you've got Kamzat, Colby, Kumaru, and Leon ahead of Bilal, and that's literally it. Now, we are going to talk later about what's happening at the top of this division, right? You've got Leon Edwards and Kumaru Usman, clearly number one and number two, who are going to be fighting uh, in London. And then uh, they did also announce that they're going to do Colby Covington and Kamzat Chimiev on that same card. And so, obviously, it's going to be whoever wins that fight winds up getting the, the shot at the winner of Kumaru and Leon. And so, it's going to probably leave Bilal. It's probably going to leave Bilal. Probably going to leave Bilal Muhammad as the odd man out in the situation, which is unfortunate. But I do believe that he's in a situation where he could wait and definitely just get his title shot in due course. Um, or, you know, he could take the winner of, or rather take the loser of Kamzat and Colby Covington. Um, I know that Bilal has expressed interest in fighting both of those individuals already in the past on social media and stuff. So I can't imagine that they're fights that he'd be too upset about unless he's really only interested in getting that title fight, which I couldn't necessarily blame him if that's what he did because he's been on a tear and uh, he looked the best that he's ever looked tonight or, you know, the other night. So uh, whatever he wants to do is what I think Bilal Muhammad ought to do. Like Bilal knows what's best for Bilal and he's going to do it. And he's going to do all right. Uh, Chow Baralho got himself another win. It was a, a hard fought decision win um, over Mahmoud Muradov, which. You can tell by that type of name. Probably came out and wrestled a bunch. Um, but the truth is that uh, Chow, he looks like a little, like a, a, a smaller uh, Borachina, a, a smaller uh, Paulo Costa, which is crazy because they're both middleweights. Um, but either way, uh, there were times whenever Muradov was able to get him to the ground, but uh, Chow knew what he was doing and was able to explode out of the positions that he needed to and uh, ultimately wound up getting on top of him in a few of these situ in, a, in a few of the situations on the ground so you know not only was he winning the fight on the st in the stand up when they were standing up but he was also managing to out grapple the guy who was a grappler 
So it was really, really performance all around for him. Uh, Nikita Krilov got a decision win over Vulcan Ozdemir. This was a crazy fight. I can't believe it even went to a decision. They cracked each other. They, uh, Nikita threatened on the ground. I, I didn't think that it was going to... I couldn't believe that uh, it actually went to a decision, but I do think that it was a proper decision. I thought that uh, Nikita won the fight as well, so uh, I ain't mad at it. It's cool to, to see him on the come up, though. Uh, he, he needed this win. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with him next. Abubakar Nurmagomedov got uh, a decision win over some fella Godzi, Omar Godziev, um, which Abubakar uh, wound up uh, making a bigger splash outside of the octagon uh, later on in the night, which we'll, we'll get to. Uh, people who are familiar already know. We're going to talk about it talk about it. got to really end though you got to stick around you and hear about that juicy shit uh carol rosa got a decision win over lisa landsberg muhammad makayev got a submission over malcolm gordon uh so all fun fights in the prelims maybe a few more decisions than we'd like to see um but there were two finishes a, a submission in the second prelim and then obviously what Bilal did uh, in the uh, feature prelim, which got him his performance bonus. Then on to the main card. Uh, Manon Floreau, uh got a win over Caitlin Chikagian. Uh, it was a hard-fought fight. I feel like the judges got this one right. Um, but ultimately, uh, immediately thereafter, uh, we wound up, they wound up getting overshined by the fight between Benil Dariush and uh, Gamro. And firstly, I want to say props to Benil for even taking this fight. Um, Gamro is one of those up and comers who nobody is raising their hand to try and fight. Um, his last fight was super impressive, a super tough fight against another up and comer, and Benil's kind of, uh, you know, the old guard thing, but Neil's like 33, something like that, so you know, he's, been, he's been around for a long time. He took the fight, and uh, he looked super impressive, man. Uh, I felt like it was 1-1 going into the third round, and I felt like Gamro was winning the third round um, up until whenever Benil hit him with that bomb left hand and set him on his ass and then you know I was about halfway through the third round and then from there Gamro was hurt brain was scrambled Benil was able to win basically every scramble every grappling transition every clinch transition every you know, he was ahead in the striking like after that big left hand that uh really it really changed the direction of the third round in a really drastic way and it made it so that it was really clear that Benil Dariush uh, had won the third round, and so for me it was a, a 29-28 for, for Benil, and I think that's pretty much what all the judges said. So um, it's nice that, uh, you know, to be on the same page as the uh, judges ever here and there, uh, which brings me to the next fight where I didn't necessarily agree with the judges, uh, which was Peter Yon and Sean O'Malley. Now, here's the deal. In terms of, like, I like the old school pride rules, where it, they put a much greater emphasis on how the fight was going when it ended, right? If that fight had kept going, who was going to win? And that's who the winner was, basically. Um, and so I thought that Sean had lost the fight. Uh, I thought that, uh, but only insofar as that's how I thought the judges were going to score it. You feel me? Um clearly if you're just looking at damage Sean busted him up worse and that's what the judges are supposed to be looking at first and foremost and if there isn't a clear winner based on damage then they go to the uh, you know grappling and control time and all that other shit and uh, there's just been a trend in judging recently where the, it seems as though they've been considering these other things when they shouldn't be and so uh, I thought that for sure the big takedown in the first round, even though he didn't do any damage with it, um, was going to secure Peter Yan uh, the, the first round, right? And I think that uh, traditionally, uh, you know, as someone who's been watching this sport for a very long time, I feel like that's how the 
judges would have scored it for the longest. And I think that things are just starting to finally turn a tide whenever you have people like Big John McCarthy, the guy who literally wrote the rules, going on his podcast with Josh Thompson and, and, and picking a big bone to pick with the judges and how they're they're not quite doing it right, how they're, how they're considering these other things whenever they shouldn't be if there's a clear definitive victor based on the things that are supposed to be considered before that. And so um, I feel like they got it right is what I'm really trying to get to. I feel like the judges really got this one right. I thought that uh, Sean was going to lose basically on technicality based on how the judges score the fights, but that ultimately in my heart he'd won. Um, because he busted him up more, and that's what the, that's what a fight's about. You're trying to hurt each other, right? And he clearly hurt Peter worse. And so in my world, he won the fight. But I also live in reality where I'm trying to forecast based on how these judges act, and the judges traditionally have uh, put a very heavy emphasis on the grappling and stuff, even if there is a clear winner in terms of damage dealt. And so uh, just based on my experience with how the judges judge the fights, I thought that he was going to lose it. I thought that he was going to lose it on technicality, but... Uh, I'm pumped that he won. I'm a big Sugar Sean fan. Uh, I clearly felt like he did more damage and that he like really won the fight. Like if you're like man to man, fuck the sport, fuck whatever's going on with judging all that. Like Sean won in my world, and so the the fact that the judges wound up getting that right is really dope. And uh, I hope that it continues to move in that direction. Right? I really. Uh, have never liked it whenever guys have been able to just hold people on the ground and do no damage and it went around right um sean definitely busted peter up better in the first round than peter busted up sean period um i mean sean turned peter into a wrestler is the bottom line uh had peter shooting takedowns all over the place and so uh you know because sean was busting him up on the feet in the first round Peter took him down and then held him there and didn't really get much done with it and Sean was even able to get up and, and deal a little damage towards the very end of the round but the bottom line is I felt like the control time was going to swing the judges in the direction of, of giving that first round to, to Sean uh, I feel like the second and third rounds are very clear cut you feel me uh, Peter Yon clearly won the second round um and then Sean clearly won the third round. With that big knee that busted Peter open, it was the most significant strike of the entire fight. You know? Uh, so that alone would have won him the third round in my book, considering how little damage was actually dealt to him by Peter in the third. So, uh, you know, it, it all comes down to how you saw the first round. And it was a split decision, right? One judge gave it to Peter. Um, so it's not like it was a robbery. There's people saying it's a robbery bullocks man it's a it was a close fight and it was a split decision and it could have gone either way you know and what matters is what's on the official record and the official record is that sean won and so the haters are gonna have to to swallow that pill dog and people going online and making you know content about how that's bullshit whatever dude there's no such thing as bad media you know what I'm saying? Uh, so these people who are going to go out and hate on Sean and make their videos and shit, that's just bringing more shine to Sean at the end of the day because people are going to look at what they're talking about and make their own determinations, right? And um, n no one that's ever made their way into a history book didn't have enemies, right? And so Sean's just going to have people who are hating on him the, the further up he goes and that's life. And I think he knows that. And you know, he's out here conquering the world with his streaming and his content creation and just be the number one contender in his division. And he's about to, he's about to be fighting the champion. He's about to be fighting fucking Aljamain Sterling, right? They set this card up so that it would be the winner of this fight would go on to fight the winner of the next fight, which was the co-main on the card, which was the championship fight uh, at Bantamweight between Aljamain Sterling and TJ Dillashaw. Now, it was a dominant win for Aljamain Sterling, but it's going to come with an asterisk, right? I mean, really, it's not. On the record books, there won't be an asterisk, but the people who saw it are going to know what's up, man. TJ Dillashaw came in hurt. Uh, his shoulder was consistently separating out. like It was popping out of place. Uh, he evidently even mentioned it to the referee beforehand, telling the referee, if it happens, don't worry. Don't stop the fight. We'll pop it back in. I'll keep going. Like We're going we're gonna to do the damn thing. And so, 
of course it pops out several times throughout the fight and when his shoulder's out while he's on the ground he's in a really really compromised position because he can't really use one of his arms very effectively and he's got Aljamain Sterling on top of him beating the dog shit out of him and it was just an absolute steamrolling um and I don't mean to take anything away from TJ Dillashaw he came in hurt um you know he's a dog maybe some people will say that he shouldn't have come into the fight hurt like that um I don't necessarily prescribe to that position. I feel like he knows his body. He knows what he can do, or at least he thought he did. And it was, it was a, it's a judgment call and no one's better able to make that judgment call than TJ Dillashaw. And so I respect his decision. Uh, I wish it hadn't been such a, a such a factor in the fight. Uh, I wish I didn't have to see TJ Dillashaw take such a vicious ass whooping, but that's this sport. And, uh, you know, it's a big congratulations to Aljamain Sterling. He went out there and did exactly what he had to do. People can try and say, well, well TJ's arm was hurt. Well, that's not his fucking fault. Uh, and he went out there and did exactly what he was supposed to and won an incredibly impress- impressive fashion. Uh, and so uh, more, more, more power to him. And we're going to see what, what happens between him and Sean O'Malley. Um, I definitely think that Sean O'Malley has the tools to win that fight. Um, but man, I don't think that Peter Yawn's quite the wrestler that Aljamain Sterling is. And I think that Aljamain will backpack Sean O'Malley and probably choke him. Honestly, uh, I'm a big Sean O'Malley fan. I'd love to see Sean O'Malley go out there and one, two Aljamain Sterling to space and the hype train just go off the rails to infinity, right? It'd be dope. It'd be a it'd be a fun little occurrence to 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 bear witness to in real life. But uh, if I'm a gambling man, I'm probably gonna have to gamble with Aljamain Sterling. You know, um, which pains me to bet against Sean O'Malley. He's my boy, but you know, uh, I feel like wrestling is the is the better foundational skill to build out upon from whenever you're trying to do mixed martial arts, and that's exactly what Aljamain has done. It's his primary skill set. He leans into it, and that's going to be the difference in that fight. If it was just a kickboxing match, man, Sean O'Malley light his fucking ass up, but it's not. It's mixed martial arts, and uh, I think that Sean will have his moments, and I think that Sean absolutely can knock Aljamain Sterling out, but I feel like it's a higher probability that Aljamain Sterling magnetizes his nose to Sean's crotch, gets him to the ground, and chokes him out. And Aljamain Sterling knows what his job is. He even tweeted as he was getting on the airplane to go to Abu Dhabi, I'm getting ready to go ride. He was just something to the effect of, I'm going to go be a backpack to TJ Dillashaw for five rounds. What's up? You know, it was his post to social media. So he knows what he's doing. Uh, he's owning it and I respect it, right? Like I don't take anything away from him. It's not an invalid way to fight. He gets his wins. He's the world champion. So <laughs> he's probably stay the world champion if he fights Sean O'Malley. Um, but we'll see. I, I'm a bigger fan of Sean O'Malley than I am of Aljamain Sterling. Not to take anything away from Aljamain Sterling, uh, just Sean O'Malley is like a weed head and like a fun eccentric character. He plays video games and shit. Like I, I, I smoke weed and play video games, dog. What's up? So just a birds of feather flock together type of thing. Um, but like I said, I, I'm super happy for Aljamain Sterling beating TJ Dillashaw. And I'm, if they fight, I'm probably gonna have to pick Aljamain Sterling. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, but then on to the main event, which is like the thing that everybody uh, is tuning in for, uh, Islam Makachev and Charles Oliveira. Now, I went on the record picking New Bronx. I didn't realize the level of boxing that Islam was working with. I thought that if anybody was going to get hurt on the feet first, it was going to be Islam, with Islam having been knocked out. And with uh, Dubronx's level of boxing, uh, I definitely thought that he would catch Makachev before Makachev would catch him. That being said, I didn't necessarily think that he'd finish him right off the bat. Uh, All it comes down to is I thought that they were both going to be hurt. They were both going to be really compromised, and it was going to turn into a wild scramble situation, and uh, do Bronx's training style over at shoot to box where they, they hurt each other all the time. And they're, they're 
more comfortable in those firefight while they're hurt situations than the average fighter because of the way they train. I thought that was going to be the difference. Obviously, Makachev stung Dubronx right off the bat. Um, well, I'll say right off the bat, right? It was, a sec- it was the second round, um, about halfway through the second round. But he hit him and knocked him to the ground and immediately chased him down to the ground. Uh, locked up a head and arm choke. Dubronx tried once really valiantly to, to get out of the choke, right? He had a moment where he could have slipped out and he tried his best and he couldn't get out of there. And he knew that he was locked in and he tapped. And it was the Islam Makachev show. You know, he he went out there and outboxed Charles Oliveira and then submitted him on the ground. And I believe that's exactly what they said they were going to do. I mean, Islam said that if he hurts Dubronx, he's going to follow him to the ground because he's not scared of his jiu-jitsu. He believes that Sambo's the better thing on the ground right and that's what he does and that he's not worried about it he's going to be able to go down there and finish him that's exactly what he did and uh, so it was a really really incredible performance out of Islam Makachev Um, Khabib was there ringside came out picked him up on his shoulders Uh, it was a beautiful scene right I mean these two if you're not familiar Khabib Nurmagomedov who's considered one of the greatest of all time retired undefeated defended his belt several times cut through the division like a hot knife through butter also at 155 um just like this dude they were uh they were like best friends as youngins and khabib's dad brought them up together basically as brothers uh doing this doing this uh wrestling and mma shit and that one man uh turned out two world champions out of a fucking little nowhere in Dagestan you know just love and commitment and hard work got it done and it's a it's a feel-good thing it's really really cool um you know R.I.P. to Khabib's father the the world definitely needs more people like him around and so uh you know we lost a good one there but uh at the end of the day his legacy lives on his plan has come to complete fruition right uh, Khabib became a world champion and retired undefeated and now little bro Islam is also a world champion being carried on the shoulders of Khabib I mean it's you, you couldn't script it to be more beautiful uh, and so it's a really really neat deal and I'm pumped that I was able to see it in real life and uh, you know Dubronx gracious in defeat uh, promised to you know just recommit himself even harder to his training so that he can get better so that he can reclaim his belt and so that he can make everybody happy you know he's got a lot of people looking at him who uh, are believing in him and are inspired by him and he doesn't want to let them down you can tell man and so uh you know sweet guy uh who's motivated by good and i'm certain that uh he is definitely going to do just that but i don't believe he's going to get his, uh, I believe he asked Dana for an immediate rematch, and I don't think he's going to get that because immediately after the fight, uh, they set up like a WWE-style promo between Islam Makachev and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, right? They did like a, they like had Volkanovsky come into the, octo- into the octagon, they like squared him up. That's, that's signed, sealed, delivered, y'all. We're getting that fight. Um. Uh, and you, know, you want to call it a super fight, but really it's just Volkanovski moving up a weight class to try and challenge for the belt, and he's got such an impressive resume, they're going to let him do it, so he gets to skip to the front of the line as a champion in the weight class below. So, I don't believe that uh, Dubronx is going to be getting an immediate rematch. Uh, they're going to be doing the uh, super fight in Perth. I believe that's in March, February? sometime early next year early mid next year um on that same card on that same perth card they've announced that uh robbie whitaker bobby knuckles and paulo costa are going to be fighting on that card so that's a fun fight you know paulo costa's in firefights all the time 
Bobby Knuckles is the you know Robbie Robbie the Reaper's every fight that he's in is fun. I can't I can't recall a fight of his that I didn't enjoy. So yeah, that's going to be pure fireworks, and it's on the same card as what uh, the Makachev and Volkanovski super fight. So that's shaping up to be just a hellacious card. And you know they always do it right out there. Uh, you know there's so many talented guys out there in Oceania. They can always stack those cards up, and it's going to sell the fuck out. So. Uh, yeah, good business. Good business all around. Uh, I think that what they're probably going to wind up doing with Oliveira is they're going to have him fight Benil Dariush. And the winner between Benil Dariush and Charles Oliveira uh, is going to wind up challenging uh, the winner of the super fight that they're doing in Perth. Uh, hell, maybe even have them fight on, on the same card. Maybe have them go fight in Perth. Um, the way they had... Uh, Aljamain Sterling and TJ Dillashaw fight on the same card as Sean O'Malley and Peter Yawn, right? Uh, have your have your setup fight for the for the championship challenger fight on the same card as the champion defending their belt. Seems like something they do pretty regularly. It helps with the it helps with the matchmaking and making things clear for the fans and stuff. So uh, hopefully they'll do something like that. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, there was some drama outside of the octagon during the fights uh, as. Khabib was on the mic after Wilbro Islam won the, won the belt and has in, had his interview in D.C., like forced Khabib to do an interview. Uh, apparently, Abubakar Nurmagomedov, the guy who had fought earlier on the prelims and cousin of Khabib, got into some type of altercation with Kamzat Chimaev, and apparently... There's been this little Dagestan Chechnya little little feud brewing online for a while now, which you know, I don't keep up with Twitter and shit, so I don't fucking know. But at the end of the day, uh, it went down. They uh, they had a little shoving match and a yelling match, and it had to get broken up. And uh, but luckily, the dictator Kadyrov from Chechnya stepped in and helped squash the beef so now Putin and Kadyrov can have their circle jerk um it's so funny how that dude Kadyrov literally looks like he's hunting every time I see him he's in freaking camouflage it's it's like he's in character I can't even really take him seriously there are no gays in Chechnya don't forget it (laughs) fucking dork um but so check this out this is a fun thing they've got Colby Covington and Kamzat Shemaev on the same card as Kumaru and Leon Edwards in March. And so, again, it's one of those situations where they're going to have the title fight, where the champion defends their belt, and they're going to have the, the, title, the, the title challenger eliminator fight, right? I feel like clearly whoever wins between Covington and Kamzat is going to be next in line for a shot at Kumaru. Um, even though the, the Covington fight might be getting a little played out, but I feel like if he beats Kamzat, it's going to be hard to tell him he needs to fight anybody else other than the champ. So we're going to see how that goes. This will be a great fight, and I feel like we're going to learn a lot about Kamzat for sure. Because Covington breaks people. Colby's a bad dude. Like he's a, he's a dork. I might not be a huge fan of his little heel role that he uh, plays, right? Um, but at the end of the day, the guy can fucking fight. And so he's definitely going to put the pedal to the floor and we're going to see how well Kamzat deals with that. And that's the bottom line. We got Patty Pimblett versus Jared Gordon in UFC 282 in December 10th. That's a little bit of a step up. Um, You know, it's cool. It seems like they're kind of giving Patty a, 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 a slow come up. They're not throwing too much at him too fast. I don't think that Jared Gordon's way too much too fast. Um, he's definitely a step up in competition. Um, but I think it's a winnable fight for Patty. I don't think it's clearly like a, a wrap. I don't think that it's a fight where Patty, they're just setting Patty up for a win. But they're definitely not uh, feeding him too much too soon, I don't feel like. So December 10th, 282, we're going to see how that goes. Um, Yuri is a freak. Yuri Prochazna, the lightweight, light heavyweight champion of the world, locked himself in a basically solitary confinement with no food for three days in darkness to confront his demons. 
I hope he did some LSD at least. That's crazy. That's wild. Homie is wilding. That's, man. You put yourself in solitary? Turn the lights off on purpose, bro? Come on. Meditating for three days with no, with no, with no food, bro? That ain't for me. I'm a thick boy. I like my, I like my electricity and shit, but whatever. Um, him and I cut from a different cloth. That's why I'm hanging out doing this podcast and shit. And he's the, the, the champion of the world, you know, it's just a, just a different type of cat, you know, I ain't doing three days in silent darkness with no food. I ain't ever going to hold that light heavyweight strap either. So different strokes of different folks, my man, uh, Bobby Green got cut. Uh, but I don't think he's necessarily like for real, for real cut. I think they just took him off the roster cause he's in trouble with USADA. I think he got popped for some type of something. He's like out for six months and they'll, they'll have him back. He was doing good. He was putting on fun fights. I got to see him live in Austin. It was a good deal. I usually don't talk about this too much, but I thought it was really neat. Uh, Bellator is doing a new year's mega card. Uh, it's on new year's Eve and they're having, Several of their top fighters go and fight some of the top fighters from Ryzen. So it's a cross prom- a cross promotional mega card and they've got guys like AJ McKee, Patricio Pitbull, Juan Archuleta and Kyoji Hiroguchi um, all going to fight. And so uh, I think that's really neat. I wish the UFC would do this type of stuff, man. Um, Scott Coker is the real deal. I'm a big, big fan of Scott Coker. Uh, anything that he's doing usually works out great. And so uh, yeah, I just am infatuated with the cross promotional mega fights. I think that's something that the UFC should be getting in on that. Like I would love to see Volkanovsky versus Patricio Pitbull. Come on. Who doesn't want to see that? So, you know, maybe instead of him going up to fight 155 champ, he could fight Patricio Pitbull. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't the one making the decisions, man. I'm just talking shit on my podcast. Uh, you know, the last thing we're going to talk about is Bo Nickel is out of his debut. That sucks. I'm a Bo Nickel jock rider. I like him a lot. Um, I think he's he's good. I think he's going to be hard to beat. For real, for real. Um, but they're looking at getting him uh, rebooked uh, for UFC 285 in March. So we're going to see uh, what happens there. Uh, looking forward, uh, we've got a UFC fight night, Cater versus Allen. Uh, that's a hard fight to pick, man. Calvin Cater's the real deal. Uh, really tough dude, really, really excellent striking, but, um, a big Arnold Allen jock rider, man. I think I might have to pick Arnold Allen on that one. I think his wrestling's too good. I think he's the young guy on the come up. I think y'all need to watch out for Arnold Allen. Uh, Calvin, if you see this, I'm sorry, buddy. You're fantastic. It's nothing against you. You're an absolutely wonderful fighter. But uh, at the end of the day, I got to make my picks. And that guy, Arnold Allen, is excellent. And like I said, it all comes down to that wrestling base, right? I think that wrestling is is the primary foundation, right? Like the For the same reason that I'm picking Aljamain Sterling over Sean O'Malley is the same reason why I'm picking Arnold Allen over Calvin Cater. It just is what it is. You got the Dirty Bird, Tim Means versus Max Griffin. Fun fight. Anything with anything with Tim Means, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big geek for. And uh, that card is like this Saturday, October 29th. You know what I'm talking about? So we got fights. We got fights on the weekend. And then the following week, so we got fights after fights after fights. This is great. Hell yeah. Uh, we've got... This is the one that's goofy on this one. Let me see. Oh, Rodriguez versus Lemos. Yeah, that's a fun one. Marina Rodriguez versus Amanda Lemos. I don't know if it's Rodriguez or Rodriguez. Oh, it's, it's, she's from Brazil. It's Rodriguez. And uh, Amanda Lemos. Uh, Amanda Lemos punches hard, dog. Um, but Rodriguez is the favorite. We'll see how that winds up panning out. We got uh, Neil Magny versus Daniel Rodriguez. This dude, Daniel Rodriguez, has been proving me wrong a bunch, man. I keep feeling like I need to pick against him. Because it's like the smart pick, 
but he keeps proving me wrong. So I would pick Daniel Rodriguez because I'm tired of this dude making me look like a dumbass. And now that I've done this, he's probably going to get his ass kicked and I look like a dumbass. But, uh, and there would be no shame in that. Neil Magny's a fucking savage. He's got like as many or more wins in the, in the, in welterweight than GSP insanely experienced, uh, and a long rangey guy who knows how to use it grapples well well rounded tough dude like really 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 tough fight for anybody to for anybody to try and uh keep up with tough fighter to try and keep up with we've also got a uh, jelton almeida versus maxim grisham jelton looked amazing in his last fight so i'll probably have to pick him uh we got tagir Oman Bekov versus Nate Manis. I don't know enough about these guys to so really make a pick. But I know I like Jelton Almeida a bunch, so I'm probably going to pick him. I'm tired of picking against Daniel Rodriguez and getting picked wrong, so I'm going to pick him. And, uh, you know, my heart tells me I'm Amanda Limos, so I'm going to pick Amanda Limos. Um, and let's see, what else do we have going after that? Oh, and then we've got UFC 281 which is going to be a really fun fight. I can't wait to see what's going to happen with this one. Israel Adesanya versus Alex Bahia. They've got all the history, right? Alex Bahia knocked him out back in back in kickboxing. I mean, excellent knockout. I mean, Alex Bahia is fucking huge. So it's not, you know, he's got that power, man. Big guy. Big guy. Carlos Esparza versus Zhang Wei Li. I'm still upset at Carla Esparza over the way that she and uh, she and Rose Nova Yunus fought. So, fucking Wang, let's go Wang, Z- Wang Zayli. And Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler. This a firefight. This could go. This is a coin flip. It, who catches who at the right moment? Who, who knows? Frankie Edgar, Chris Gutierrez. Uh, I don't know too much about Chris Gutierrez, but I know Frankie Edgar's getting old and getting a little chinny. Um, you know, I might just be in my heart leaning kind of away from Frankie Edgar, just seeing how his last few fights have gone, but I don't know enough about this other guy to really make a pick. And, uh, Dan Hooker and Claudio Poyez, finally, I mean, 13 and two, damn, but I feel like Claudio Poyez, this might be a little too much too soon for Claudio. Um, I got to pick Dan Hooker in that one, but, uh, you know, that's a wrap guys. We've talked about 280. We've talked about some kind of things happening around the MMA world. And then we've looked at the fights leading up to and including UFC 281. Uh, I feel like we've, you know, I've, I've consumed enough of your time. You guys get back to living your lives. Go hug your kids. Play with your dogs. Uh, frolic, frolic through a field. When was the last time you tried that? It's wonderful. Go for it. Armchair Army. Peace. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth. Monkey mouth.